Welcome back to Tea Time with Torloth. Today, I've revived a topic I wanted to cover after Resident Evil 3 got backlash for how short of an experience it was. The concept of length versus price. But without much more rambling, let's just get right into it. This is a divisive topic that keeps being brought up with re-releases and remakes and shorter experiences. When I say how much I like and appreciate a game, I rarely bring price into the discussion. Since, unless the game is made by Nintendo, the price will drop eventually. I tend to wait for sales on games I'm on the fence about, Code Vein being a perfect example. I think this argument becomes mute over time with sales and games falling into a price where the market will actually accept, and with the new focus on game services like Game Pass, EA Origin, PS Now, where you're not paying a price up front to play a game. Video games are a strange type of art. Being interactive, they become very personal. What makes anyone gravitate to a game could be any number of reasons. Video games come in so many flavors and combos of them that it's really hard to pick what most people would value a game at. To me, Resident Evil 3 was worth what I paid for it, which was about 20% below average retail price. But games like Link's Awakening on Switch, I value much closer to $40 since it's so short and doesn't deviate much from the original. Like most people in 2020, I have less disposable income, so I've been less likely to take chances on a game without getting to try it first. But 2020 for me has also been the year of Game Pass, and I've not really been without good games to play. But I have taken a few chances, like on Ark of the Alchemist. It wasn't very good. There were some good ideas there, but not executed well. The other was Altea Reza. A pretty interesting game with a slow start that suffers from I bought it weeks before Death's End Request 2 came out and I was moving out and had zero time to play modern games and was spending the few hours I had gaming on my laptop with the 1998 Magic the Gathering game, Chandelar. I'll, I'll get into that one later, but I digress. I don't understand the $1 per hour of gameplay value argument. This is the sort of thing I hate in games, when they waste my time. Games stalling to make the playtime longer or they're trying to meet a playtime quota or something. But on the flip side, a game like Transistor, one I love, I feel like it needed a little longer to give the combat system a chance to blossom into its final form. Then you have the opposite, which would be most open world Ubisoft games where they're 90% padding with their towers and an insane number of collectibles. I was gonna try and get a clip of the 100 plus feathers from Assassin's Creed 2, but it, it appears I sold or gave mine away since I don't own any Assassin's Creed games anymore. I don't want people to think that I'm picking on Assassin's Creed, I just Assassin's Creed 2 and its insane number of collectibles is burned into my head when I think of this. If you like Assassin's Creed, you, you have fun with your game. But on the flip side, we have longer games like Divinity Original Sin 2 and Witcher 3, where nothing really felt padded. Sure, there were quests that were not as good as others, but they were all very well designed. And if it was a shorter, not as important quest, it didn't have as much time in the spotlight. I want to get back into that mindset that people have where they think one dollar per hour of gameplay is a good value argument. Because if that's the case, then a game like Overwatch, where I probably have hundreds of hours in from playing matches with my friends, would be infinitely more valuable to me than a game like Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 3 where I've replayed them much less. If you distill everything down into a numbered score or just this much time versus this much money equals best value, you're missing out on what video games actually are. And regardless of what anyone will tell you, video games are an art, especially the good ones. Like, look at how popular retro gaming has become, and how people have gone back to find these games and try and find stories about how these games were made and why they are the way they are. One day, the games we're playing today will be retro. 
they will be antiques to someone else, to whatever the modern equivalent of games is at that point. And that's what's so weird about this discussion of, well, this game isn't a good value. And the concept of, like, Metacritic scores and the way social media is with peer pressure and people being forced into playing something they don't really like or have very little interest in. I want people to find solace in that I don't intend to push games on people. I'm not here... I don't make these videos to talk about games I don't like. I made these videos to talk about something I do like or something I found interesting in concept, but it failed to hold me just because of my taste in games or I decided to hit random on Game Pass and see what came up. I honestly think that thinking of gaming in just the current modern space and what's available now and that being the only thing that's worth playing is just insane to me. Games are always worth playing, whether they're made this year, last year, or 15 or 20 years ago. If you like it, play it. If you don't, don't. You're not missing out. You shouldn't feel obligated to play something because your favorite YouTuber or review outlet says it's a good game. Wrapping up here, in my notes when I was writing out basically what I was trying to get across, I wrote down three lines. Longer playtime does not equal better value. Longer playtime does not equal a better game. And cheap does not equal a good value. As a video game connoisseur yourself, perhaps you could answer the question. What do you find valuable in a video game? Is it replay value? Is it endless multiplayer? Is it a short, concise, and fun story, or a spooky experience that you can't get anywhere else. Leave a comment below, I'm very interested. But that's gonna do it for me for this week. I will see you next week and maybe I'll have the set set up. Don't hold your breath, I need to get a new mic for my camera. But until then, matinee.